Good Thursday afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick here, and welcome into another edition of Weather Classroom. Uh, back after a week off, as I was uh, just regular off last week, but glad to be back here for Weather Classroom on this Thursday. Uh, pretty hectic day, or pretty hectic week weather-wise, I should say, especially with the wind stuff that we dealt with from this previous Thursday. So I actually wanted to kind of hop off of the back of that weather event and talk about windstorms for today because it is uh, not necessarily the most common term across the nation, but it is something that is probably, uh, when it comes to wind events for the inland northwest and the Spokane area, is almost the only thing that we deal with in terms of uh, wind severity across our region. So uh, let's dive a little bit into windstorms for today and just how they are a bit more common for the Pacific Northwest as a whole, how they form, and just how that compares to other weather events that provide a lot of wind and potentially wind damage across the rest of the nation. As always, Weather Classroom every Thursday at 1 p.m., pending if I'm uh, on vacation or whatnot. Uh, and do make sure that you are hitting like on this video as well as on my page, so that way you can get not just live weather updates, but of course the uh, notifications for when Weather Classroom goes live. So thanks again for all of your support and trust when it comes to the weather and this educational content. Uh, so yeah, let's just, let's just dive right into it and just uh, start before we even get into windstorms, just the different weather events that can cause damaging winds and just kind of a short list that I have here pretty simple uh, we know that tornadoes would be uh, obviously a wind driven event but obviously very pinpoint uh, and very isolated when it comes to just how where the strongest winds are out of a tornado hurricanes have a much larger winds field and obviously can uh, be very, very violent with uh, some hurricane wind speeds being as high as, I think, like 180, 190 miles per hour in some of the worst case scenarios, uh, but uh, can affect several, several states uh, with some very strong winds. Deratios, that would be similar to the event that we had in Iowa earlier this summer. That was a deratio, a severe thunderstorm complex that produced a widespread bit of wind uh, across several states for a very long period of time. That would also be another extreme wind event uh, that would hit very many people, more so than just what a individual severe thunderstorm could. But of course, severe thunderstorms themselves can produce wind gusts of 60, 70, even 80 miles per hour on occasion. And then we have wind storms, which is actually kind of the none of the above category. A windstorm isn't a tornado, it's not a derecho, it's not a severe thunderstorm, and it's not a hurricane, but there are some there are some weather systems that produce violent winds that are just none of the above. So the lack of categorization there pretty much makes the new category where we just call that windstorms, which are a bit more, or uh, that would also be similar to gales uh, for the uh, for the avid sailors <laughs> uh, in, uh, or, or the sailor enthusiasts out there. So gales and windstorms would kind of be the closest hand-in-hand uh, -hand comparison because, yeah, windstorms are really just None of the above when it comes to these other events, but all of these weather uh, weather events do cause damaging winds. Hurricanes can have winds of over 100 miles per hour. Same with tornadoes, derechos, and even windstorms and gales on occasion. Uh, so here in Spokane and the Pacific Northwest, it's pretty much just windstorms is the only thing that we can get high winds in our region. Tornadoes are very rare, not impossible, but very rare. Obviously, we don't get hurricanes at all, and derechos is not a thing in the inland northwest, though we do get severe thunderstorms on occasion. Uh, less rare than tornadoes, but again, not, not impossible uh, to get strong thunderstorms. But windstorms is really the one weather event for uh, Washington and Oregon and Idaho that's gonna do any kind of widespread wind damage uh, every year or so. And I think a lot of people would remember the windstorm from 2015. Here's kind of the typical Pacific Northwest setup for a windstorm. We would have a low pressure area and a very strong jet stream and jet streak that comes along with it. And I know this diagram is quite simple, but there are some other more in-depth meteorological aspects that go into this that we would pretty much consider. But it's actually the direction that it goes it has to uh, some of the strongest windstorms in the uh, in the Pacific Northwest had the low pressure area pretty much sweep in in that direction and actually the jet stream would have streaks embedded 
uh, in it that would even cause the uh, wind speeds to be even faster yet. And we're talking jet stream wind speeds of 200 miles per hour or even faster. And that's the wind energy that can actually get transferred down to the surface. And obviously, since it's coming on shore, there's not much friction to slow it down until it hits you know, land and the mountains and trees and whatnot to actually try to prevent and uh, put the brakes on some of those winds. But this is basically our typical setup here where we would just get these onshore winds that would be extremely fast for the region a lot of that jet stream energy coming down to the surface and the low pressure area would have to be in its strengthening phase much like a nor'easter if you will uh, some of you may also be familiar with the term um, bomb cyclo or bombocyclogenesis the more uh, apt meteorological term for that similar situation but just the pacific style of storm as opposed to the uh the new england style of storm if you will so instead of a big snow or rain event like say nor'easters this one is just lots of wind energy and little or no precipitation in fact precipitation not a requirement to have a, uh, a windstorm, if you will. Uh, we had a little bit of a windstorm from this past Tuesday. It wasn't the strongest thing. And in fact, it wasn't so much the low pressure area. It was just the jet stream winds that were uh, causing, uh, causing the issues from this Tuesday. But check this out. We got this video from Quincy Elementary um, and they had a... Uh, they had quite the burst of wind. And I want you to check out this video here. Uh, that we got and notice that the skies are blue it looks like it's just kind of a normal windy day you see the trees kind of shaking in the distance there but what happened is, is that there was a piece of wind energy known as a microburst that came down and essentially it's just a column of air ejecting down towards the ground and it hits the ground it spreads out and the winds come and pick everything up and you're going to see in just a couple seconds here what happened uh when that microburst came out obviously you see the uh the trees are um, getting quite restless at that moment, and it should be right here. Uh, the roof came off of the building here on a completely sunny day in, in Quincy, Washington. And the winds just came with this microburst, a dry microburst, because there was no rain involved. Wet microbursts are more common because the rain and that cold air can actually drive the microburst winds. But in this case, it was just a cold, dry column of air that came down, hit the ground, spread out, and caused those violent winds that uh, ended up damaging the school here. So that is obviously a more isolated incident. But when we get windstorms, basically this can happen. You can have a sunny day with wind gusts of 70 miles per hour on occasion. Uh, but this, that, so while that looked quite devastating, uh, I think a lot of people in the Spokane area probably remember the windstorm, the historic windstorm from 2015. In fact, this was the strongest windstorm uh, recorded in Spokane's history. Uh, with uh, with especially in the winter time because this happened on November 17th 17th 18th of 2015 and we've never had wind gusts in the fall or winter time recorded above 70 miles per hour and I believe some of the strongest wind gusts were like 71 to 77 in that event that's actually equivalent to a category one hurricane which would be 74 mile per hour winds and these windstorms have large wind fields as well their low pressure areas are as big as some hurricanes as well well so that's what makes it different than say normal severe thunderstorms which it's just a small like one to two mile stretch of strong winds now this was pretty much the entire state that was getting these strong winds and in this case it was about 180,000 people without power that's about as bad as it can get and these kind of wind storms uh, especially with wind gusts above 70 75 miles per hour usually only occur about every 20 to 50 years or so so it is very much a, a generational event when we get to events like this and of this magnitude. So uh, there's always a lot of comparison drawn from, oh, is, a, is it going to be a windy day coming up? Well, is it going to be as bad as 2015? And most every time we just say, no, it's not going to be as bad as 2015. But it doesn't mean we can't see damage like we did on Tuesday uh, with the not just trees, but the, the school building and the roof that got uh, severely damaged. We get power outages. Pretty much with anything that has winds of above 45 miles per hour can cause some wind damage from time to time. But yeah, essentially these wind storms, like what we saw, uh, like what we saw in this video, sunny, blue, 
dry day, but you can still get wind. And uh, those are pretty much the windstorms that we see uh, in the Pacific Northwest because we just don't get any of those other weather events that would otherwise give us wind damage. Uh, yeah, so again, just kind of to recap, and I know everybody might be tuning in from different areas of the country where, you know, tornadoes or derechos might be more common in the Midwest. Uh, you would have nor'easters would be uh, obviously strong wind events for the Northeast, the Southeast U.S. getting hurricanes, of course. And then here in the West Coast, we get the windstorms. And actually in the Pacific Northwest, we get those traditional windstorms and the gales uh, for Oregon and Washington. But California, they can get like the Santa Anita winds, which are the mountain influence gap winds uh, that come and crest over the mountains. Uh, some of you may be familiar with seeing, I think it's Mount Washington in Vermont. Is it Vermont or New Hampshire? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but you might see uh, some of their videos on Twitter. Some of the fastest winds recorded in the U.S. are always constantly on Mount Washington, which is like, you can, they can get like 120, 130 mile per hour winds just cresting over the top of the mountains, which is uh, really kind of neat to see that they have their employees get their, you know, they get their anemometers and their, their kestrel instruments and they have to like brace themselves against the wind. It's always uh, very neat to see. Uh, those people brave the elements to try to record those wins, which all gets put back into our computer model data. But before I delve kind of into the uh, the the uh, um, the rabbit hole that is meteorology, because all these things can just go one into another. Like we can go from windstorms to jet streams to temperature gradients to you know, to to model reporting and oh man. All of that gets covered here in Weather Classroom. In fact, we've already had a jet stream uh, topic previously. So, um, yeah, with that being said, uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I know kind of a short one for today, but that's really all I have on the windstorms. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, when we get these windy events, it's always important to know when they're going to occur to make sure that we're just prepared and bracing ourselves for these strong winds, even if it's something as simple as uh, nailing down the trampoline in our backyards. Because I remember growing up in Wisconsin that we would do that before uh, big wind events because we wouldn't want our trampoline to be in our neighbor's yard by the end of the day. So um, yeah, always important to make sure that we're on top of these uh, large weather events and hopefully we don't see anything uh, like the 2015 historic windstorm uh, from years past. But uh, every once in a while, we get some very strong uh, weather events and wind events, especially for the Spokane area. This is kind of a priority for us, especially in the fall time uh, when we get the jet stream influence uh, uh, a bit more for our region. In fact, when we had these strong winds this past Tuesday, I believe some of the wind gusts in the jet stream, the jet streak level, was upwards of 200 or 215 miles per hour. So lots of wind energy does get transferred to us, and obviously we saw some power outages. Not 180,000, I think it was only about 7,000 from this uh, last event. But that does it for today. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to be talking about, um, we're actually going to be recapping the smoke uh, across the inland northwest now that that data is analyzed hoping uh, to maybe do a topic on that uh, but the official winter weather outlook is going to be released in the coming weeks as well if it's not by next week it'll be the week after but that is coming up uh, so expect more topics about the winter weather to come la nina and el nino and the official uh, winter weather forecast that is going to be released uh, later on this month. So we have that to look forward to in Weather Classroom. And of course, if you have any weather topics that you would like me to explore and discuss uh, and we can collaborate on, always happy to hear that. Make sure to leave a comment here on Facebook or over on YouTube as well. Uh, but with that being said, that does it for me. Thanks again for watching Weather Classroom. We'll be back next Thursday for sure uh, as I'm working my normal shift. So again, if you have any questions, just drop me a message at any time, and I'll be sure to get back to you. All right, that's it for today. Uh, yeah, have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I know things are getting a little bit colder and a little bit windier, but uh, yeah, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you later.